Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing a medication known as aripiprazole. Its brand name is Abilify. Before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. So aripiprazole is an atypical antipsychotic agent. It exerts its effects through partial agonist activity on dopamine D2 receptors, as well as serotonin 5-HT1A receptors. And it also has antagonism for 5-HT2A receptors. In terms of indications for use, aripiprazole can be used to treat psychomotor agitation associated with autistic disorder. It can be used in combination with lithium or valproate in the treatment of manic or mixed episodes seen in bipolar 1. It's also indicated to be used as monotherapy for manic episodes or mixed episodes. Abilify can be used for maintenance therapy in bipolar 1. It can be used in Gilles de la Tourette syndrome. It can be used as an adjunct therapy in major depressive disorder or MDD. And finally, it has a role in schizophrenia. Now, before somebody was to use aripiprazole or Abilify, there are some precautions and warnings that they should be made aware of. So aripiprazole is on the Beers criteria, which is a list of medications that the elderly population should either avoid or use cautiously. We would want to avoid using these antipsychotics in the elderly population because there would be an increased risk of experiencing a cerebrovascular accident and the risk of mortality would also increase. Some patients using this medication have reported an inability to control their core body temperature. This would be more common following strenuous exercise, exposure to heat, the use of other anticholinergic medications, or dehydration. Orthostatic hypotension is a possibility with Abilify. Patients would be at an increased risk of experiencing this side effect if they had a history of cardiovascular or cerebrovascular disease. If a patient used a strong CYP3A4 inducer, they should avoid using the extended release Abilify injection for at least 14 days. The higher the dose and the longer the therapy may increase the risk of patients experiencing tardive dyskinesias that in some situations may not be reversible. Patients with pre-existing risk factors for diabetes, such as obesity or a family history of diabetes, may put themselves at an increased risk of experiencing a lack of control of their blood sugars. This would usually result in hyperglycemia or just worsening of their glucose control. Monitoring for these individuals is recommended. Dyslipidemias, as well as weight gain, have both been reported with the use of aripiprazole. Dysphagia has also been reported, and this could lead to aspiration pneumonia due to esophageal dysmotility. Seizures have also been reported with the use of aripiprazole. Patients would be at an increased risk of experiencing a seizure if they're using other medications that also decrease the seizure threshold, or if they have a history of convulsive disorders. Once somebody is made aware of the precautions and warnings and they start to use aripiprazole, they can expect to receive their dose either through tablet form or through an intramuscular injection. When this medication is being used in bipolar 1 in its tablet form, we would give 5 or 15 milligrams once daily with a goal of reaching that 15 once daily dose. The maximum dose in this situation would be 30 milligrams daily. When patients are using the injection, it would typically be given at a strength of 400 milligrams intramuscularly monthly. Typically before a patient starts the intramuscular injections, they would make sure that they can tolerate oral aripiprazole first. This may take up to two weeks. When individuals are using aripiprazole to treat their major depressive disorder, usually to start, two or five milligrams would be given once daily. The dose can then be increased in increments of up to five milligrams each week and the maintenance dose would be somewhere between 2 and 15 milligrams daily. As with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using aripiprazole, so I'll go over some of those here now. Weight gain can happen anywhere from 7 to 20% of the time. Constipation happens in up to 11% of patients, and nausea can happen up to 15% of the time. Acathesias have been reported between 2 and 25% of the time. Extrapyramidal side effects may occur between 2 and 27% of the time, and up to 10% of patients may experience dizziness. Around 20% may experience headaches or insomnia. 4 to 17% of patients may experience anxiety. Up to 8% may experience blurred vision, and up to 12% restlessness. Now some more rare but serious side effects would be pancreatitis, a granulocytosis, rhabdomyolysis, the development of a seizure, tardive dyskinesias, 
And finally, the development of suicidal thoughts or ideation. That's all we're going to talk about today with aripiprazole or Abilify. As always, I'm thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help me grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.